Question number five from um, M1 Mechanics 1, January 2020, International A-Level LXL paper. Um, a car travels at a constant speed of 40 meters per second in a straight line along a horizontal racetrack. At time t equals zero, the car passes a motorcyclist who is at rest. The motorcyclist immediately sets off to catch up with the car. The motorcyclist accelerates at 4 meters per second squared for 15 seconds and then accelerates at 1 meters per second for a further t seconds until he catches up with the car. Sketch on the same axis the speed time graph for the motion of the car and the speed time graph for the motion of the motorcyclist from time equals zero to the instant when the motorcyclist catches up with the car. Okay, so here we have to do a speed time graph. Now this speed time graph, of course you've got your speed on your y-axis and your time on your x-axis. So here we have speed in meters per second and here you have time in second. Time in seconds. Okay, now the car is traveling at a constant speed of 40 meters per second in a straight line. Okay, so it's like the car is just going on, a, on just on a path like this, a straight line. Okay, let's say that's 40 over here. It's just a sketch. So let's say the car is traveling at this at the speed of 40 meters per second. So that's 40 meters per second there, constant speed. Okay, then it says at time equals zero, the car passes the motorcyclist at rest. So this is time equals zero. So the motorcyclist starts from rest and he immediately sets off to catch up with the car. So he goes at four meters per second for 15 seconds. Okay, so that means he's going to reach a speed, if you think about it, of 60. 60 meters per second because he's going at 4 meters per second per second for 15 seconds so speed is increasing at f his speed is increasing every second by 4 meters per second so at 15 seconds 15 times 40 will tell you his speed which is going to be 60 so by the time he's reached 15 seconds he would have reached 60 meters per second so he's going to be going something like that Okay, so that's 15 seconds, 60 meters per second. And then at one meters per second squared for a further T seconds until he catches up with the car. Okay, then after that, he's going to be going at a less, acceleration will be less, so the gradient of his velocity time graph will be less until he reaches a point where he's caught up with the car. So let, let me try and make this a bit more realistic. Okay, so it's gonna look something like that. So let's just, Put this back a bit. No, okay. So until he catches up with the car, so for a further t seconds. So basically, this is going to be t plus fifteen seconds, and that's when he catches up with the car. Okay, so there we have the speed time graph. Basics of it. Okay, let's try and make a ribbon here. Okay, so we need to now answer some of the questions that they're asking us. All right, so now, um, sketch on the scheme axis the speed time graph of the motion of the car and the speed time graph of the motion of the motorcycle is okay. Yeah, so that's perfectly fine for our sketch. Okay, now, part, at the instant when t equals t1 seconds, the car and the motorcyclist are moving at the same speed. Okay, it looks like it's at this point here. Okay, this is the point they're talking about, when they're moving at the same speed. Their speeds are the same at this point over here. Okay, so this is the point that they're looking at where t equals t1, the time is t1. They're moving at the same speed, okay? Which is, of course, 40 meters per second. All right, so you've got to find the value of T1. Well, basically, we know, um, if we think about this constant acceleration here, we can think about this in two ways, actually. Okay, you can answer this question in two ways. One of them, you can think about the fact is constant acceleration for the motorcyclist. So you can use the Suvat equations. 
Okay, so you want to find t, you know u is 0, okay, you know v is 40 because it's going to reach 40 meters per second, that's when it's going to be going at the same speed, and you know the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared, okay, as they told us in the question, yeah, and we want to find t. So we got v equals u plus a t, so you're going to have v minus u over a is going to give you the time. So it's going to be V, which is 40 minus 0 over 4, which will be 10 seconds. You can do it that way. Another way you could do it is by using similarity. All right, you know that uh, you've got these two similar triangles. Okay. That's T1, that's 15. That's 40, and that's 60. So you can say T1 is equal to 15 times 40 over 60. Okay, so that cancels with that. That cancels with that, leaving you with... That leaves you with what? 2 and 3. So that's going to be 3 into 15 goes 5. 5 choose a 10. So you get the same answer, okay? Both of those are perfectly acceptable ways of finding T1. So it's 10 seconds. Okay, part C, make some more space for us. Show that t squared plus kt minus 300 equals zero, where k is a constant to be found. Okay, so they didn't tell us any information that leads to this, but what you can understand from the question is the fact that at the time t plus 15, they have both traveled the same distance. Okay, and if they've traveled the same distance, then the area under the graph for the car and the area under the graph of the motorcyclist must be equal to each other because it's the area under the graphs that tell us the distance. So you can say that at t plus 15 you have the same distance, the same distance travelled. Sorry about my bad writing. Okay, so let's now have a look at this. You've got the motorcyclist, which is 40 times t plus 15, that's the easy one, is equal to the area under this, well, the first part, you've got this, you've got this triangle which is going to be 15 times 60 over 2, this area of this triangle here, base times height. So it's going to be 15 times 60 over 2, plus the area of this trapezium, which is the distance between the parallel sides, which is, this is T from there to there. Okay, so you're going to have T over 2, the distance between the parallel sides divided by 2, times the sum of the parallel sides. So, one of the parallel sides is 60, which is from there to there. Plus, and then you're going to have the other parallel side. Now, we need to know what this, this value is over here. That's what we need to know. Okay, so what is this value over here? Okay, we need to know what this is. Okay, we need to find basically what the height of this this, this this part is and we can do it because we we know that um, we know the acceleration here is one meters per second squared so we can say all right we can use v equals u plus at if you want so we can say v equals u the initial speed is 60 plus a which is one times t which is that time between then there is t 60 plus t so this value is 60 plus t that's the value here Okay, so you have 60 plus t is the other parallel side. Okay, so what we've done there is we said the area of this rectangle, which is 40 times t plus 15, is equal to the area of this under this graph, which is made of two parts. One is a triangle, which is 15 times 60 divided by 2, plus the area of this trapezium. Now, the parallel sides of the trapezium go up like this, so it's the dif distance between the parallel sides, which is t, divided by 2, that's the half of the distance between the parallel sides, times the sum of the parallel sides, which is 60 plus 
60 plus t. Okay, so that should give us something that looks like this, and we can then find what the value of k is. So let's simplify this now. You've got 40t plus 15 times 40, which is 600, equals, this is going to be 2 into 30, 60 goes 30 times. Okay, 15 times 30 is 450. Plus, and you're going to have t over 2 times 60, times 120. This is like 120, isn't it? So you're going to have 60t. That's 120 times t over 2, plus t squared over 2. Okay, so let's multiply everything by 2 to get rid of this fraction here. So you have 80t plus 1200 equals 900 um, plus 120t plus t squared. So now we want to simplify this to have it look like that. So we've got t squared and you've got 1, 8, 120 minus 80, which is plus 40t. And you've got 900 minus 1200, which is minus 300 and equals 0. Just put everything onto this side, basically. t squared, there's no other t squared terms. 120 minus 80, or 40. 900 minus 1200, 300. So you can see we've got the same form as this. So we can say, therefore, k is equal to 40. And there we have the answer to the question. Okay, so they didn't tell us here, um, you know, anything about how this came about, but we could have deduced from the question that by the time you reach t plus 15, they've traveled the same distance because that's when the motorcyclist catches up with the car. Okay. So there we, there we, we can say, okay, they've traveled the same distance, so the area under these two must be the same. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number five.